You ready? All right. Hi, guys. I'm Andy Calloway. Uh, I'm with Frontline Communications. We're the manufacturer of the truck. Uh, Bradley with EVS. Uh, and I work together on everything that we built for you guys. Um, this rehab truck, I'm going to go over the power system, the startup, and the shutdown procedure. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to shut it down uh, just to keep from running down the batteries. This truck is built with our vehicle integrated power system. It's a power system that Frontline patented. Uh, there's a 12 volt uh, auxiliary alternator under the hood that drives a bank of batteries in the back and the bank of batteries then control all of your DC and all of your inductive loads. And it also runs an inverter for all of the AC. Um, for this truck, most of the AC is just really for charging. Um, so we're gonna start right here. This is the control panel that controls everything. On the top is the AC. On the bottom is all the DC. This is our control panel right now. It, it's asleep, so we're gonna wake that up by pushing the center button. And you'll see the menu here on the center button. Right now it is switched to on. So if I wanna go over, I've got three choices for my switch. I've got off, charger only, and on. So if I wanted to switch it off, I could just hit that and switch it off or charger only. I'm gonna leave it on on. Okay, we go back, and then if we go to our graphic interface here, we can see that we have shore power coming in to the inverter, and the inverter is running the truck right now and charging the batteries. So down at the bottom, this goes to sleep after 10 minutes. This is our DC voltmeter, and we can see we have 13 amps now coming into the truck, which is a lot better than we had this morning. Uh, if we want to turn on the lights, double click, turns on the lights, both underneath the cabinets and the ceiling lights. These are DC lights. If we want to dim them, we can just hold this. We can dim those lights or we can turn them all the way off. All right. So now we're going to turn them all the way on. This is our DC comms cutoff. Red light on means the DC comms are on. All right. Um, curb lights, scene lights, rear scene lights. So our, input, our, our inverter output is active. So now we can turn on all of our AC outlets. These are the interior outlets, exterior outlets. And then these are the different outlets inside the truck. You have a different breaker for your coffee makers right there and a different breaker for your refrigerators. The refrigerators are both AC and DC. So if we want to power down the truck, but let's say we want to power down the truck, but we want to keep the refrigerators energized. All right, so I'm gonna switch this to charger only. First of all, pardon me, let me turn my AC off. And I'm gonna switch this to charger only. So. On charger only, with the shore power connected, you're charging the batteries and the refrigerators are still energized. If I want to be able to have my radios live and everything, keep my comms breaker on, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch it to on. And that means as long as it's plugged into shore power, all the DC is still live. All right, I don't. I don't really care about it being live. I can come in and use what I want as long as it's on shore power. The difference is if I have it on charger only, everything is still energized. But if that shore power, if somebody comes in at night and unplugs that shore power, you're going to kill everything. Okay? You will, the batteries will not continue to draw down the truck. If I have it on inverter on state and somebody pulls the shore power, the batteries will continue to draw down the truck, which is, we experienced that this morning. And then you have to, there's a procedure to go through and charge it back up. But my suggestion is to have it on charger only. If you're gonna park it, 
and you want to keep the truck energized, have it on charger only. That way, if somebody inadvertently unplugs it, you don't kill the batteries. You can draw those batteries down, you know, two or three times. If you, they'll last for years. They'll last for three to five years if you take good care of them. If you draw them down below 10 volts, two, three times, you're not going to bring them back up. Okay. Is there any alert system? Can you go over system? that again? Yes. Is, is there any alert system to send a message that says you're offshore power and you're on battery only? No, the only alert yeah. system we have is if you're running, um, let's, let's say you're on site and you've got a lot of AC running. You, you don't have a lot of AC in this truck, but if you had monitors and some workstations and you're on site, you have no shore power, you turn off the engine. So your truck will still be energized from the batteries. We do have an alert uh, to tell you that your batteries are, when you're fully powered, your batteries are at about 10% capacity. And then you want to start the truck again and you want to engage the emergency brake and you want to put it on medium or high idle. All right, so I'm going to show you that right now real quick. If you're on site, we can start the engine and that'll kick the shore power off. Okay, and I'm gonna put this on medium idle. We have a medium idle and a high idle. The AC for this truck, again, primarily is just for a ton of chargers. We've got a bunch of outlets for chargers. But this air conditioning unit is a DC powered air conditioning unit. So if you're gonna run this on a hot day and you wanna run that AC, Put the truck in high idle mode, and that way you can run the AC without worrying about the differential in the battery power. So if I go right here to my user interface and look at my pages, now I can see there, there is no shore power, and my DC power is what's powering the inverter. Okay, so now we're running off truck power versus the shore power. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk again about the shut down okay so we're going to shut down the truck at night um, I'll turn all my AC off I'm gonna go back to my menu it's on switch so I'll hit switch right now it's on charger only so if I'm going to leave it um, in a bay with shore power and I want to keep my refrigerators energized or the chargers energized leave it on charger only that way if somebody inadvertently unplugs the shore power the, the batteries will not continue to draw down if I put it on on boom okay now my inverter is active now I have AC power but if I'm charging at night, somebody unplugs the charger, those batteries will continue to draw down from the comms and the chargers and everything like this. And what is the anticipated burn rate? So, so I don't have an anticipated burn rate. The reason is it's just they're, they're all custom trucks, and it just depends. There's a lot of variables. So normally with a fully equipped truck, it's a, we got a rack full of equipment, four monitors, four workstations. Uh, you can go inside if there's no, I mean, you'd have your radio and you have your transmitter for your radio. If you had like a, a microwave transmitter or some high band transmitter, you can typically run the truck for about four hours with no motor running and no shore power. Depending on equipment load, you know. With the AC on too? With, no, sorry, not without the, not with the AC on. With the AC on, that's a inductive load that's really going to draw those batteries down i'd say maybe 30 minutes or something so so we definitely want to run the engine when you're running the air conditioner all right and then you then you can just run it as long as you have fuel you, you don't have any power all right any other questions about the power all right I'm sure there's millions of them <laughs> two in the morning when you're here by yourself going how do i do this so this I would encourage each of you to just come and just run through this menu a couple of times. It's pretty simple. 
if I can do it, I gotta tell you, you don't have to be too smart to do it. Um, and this is a big help. For instance, um, let's go ahead and plug the shore power back in. Wait a I gotta shut the engine off first. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go here. Um, all right, there you go. So I'm gonna hit my switch. And now we're just drawing down batteries, right? So I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna turn it to charger only. Okay, and now we can plug the shore power back in, please, sir. Thank you. So you pull up But I have, on charger only, I have no input, in, inverter output. Okay, so let's hit switch. Let's turn it back to on. And now I have input inverter output. So I have, that means the batteries are receiving the, power. Well, that means the batteries are discharging power. Yeah. With your inverter on, you know, your charger's on, you have shore power, right? And there's my shore power. Indicator with an arrow? Yep. And you can see the little flow lines the coming way. out. See the flow where they're going into the inverter and into the battery bank. So we have the batteries being charged and if you, you can run the air conditioner without the engine, if you're on shore power and continue to run all day, as long as you're on shore power, the AC will run fine. All right, so our awnings, here's our awning control. Um, you have a passenger side and a driver's side awning. Out, simply runs the awning out. So the way the awnings are wired today is you have to have the engine off to deploy the awnings. We're going to send it back to EVS. We're going to switch that around so that when the awnings, when you want to deploy the awnings, if you want to do it with the truck running, you just pull the emergency brake out. That emergency brake kind of activates our alarm system. So if something is deployed and somebody comes in, puts the truck into gear, with, if the emergency brake is on, you're going to have a real loud audible alarm that tells you that you have an antenna deployed, you've got jacks deployed, you got a mast deployed, or in your case, awnings, or you have a door open. So your doors and your jack, you don't have jacks, your doors and your awnings will be tied into that alarm system. So you want to stow it. The awning button right there is a push button and that'll pull the awnings back in. The awning also, does it have a wind sensor as well? It does. Is there any sensors on wind? It affects so much wind. It's, I believe the wind sensor is 23 miles an hour. It will it will draw the awnings back in. Automatically? Yeah. yeah. So, we are going to put an alarm on there it won't draw them in if somebody puts the vehicle in gear, but it will set off the audible alarm. That's a piezo alarm underneath the uh, instrument. Panel. Is there one on each side or just this one? There is one on each side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 The last thing is the truck is equipped with an auto eject uh, shore power. So as we just did, if he starts the truck, pops that shore power out. Let's 
questions? Questions? Um, so, if the truck's parked, everything's off, and we have the shore power uh, connected, or let's say it doesn't get connected, and it's sitting here, and um, you're saying that in that situation, the batteries can go dead. So, because the refrigerator and the freezer are still drawing yes, power. Sir. So, I'm going to run through this again because I want you to understand. Yeah. And then I want to take you around back and show you something. All right. So, if you park the truck and it's in shore power, my recommendation. No, they're going to be deploying this thing, so it's going to be parking on the scene with no shore power. That's Is that what question. you mean, John? Well, that's no. ultimately. We, we have we struggle sometimes with keeping the shore line plus like you found just the other day and i'm worried that we the downside to that in this truck is huge compared to just a, 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 a melted uh, ice and freezer in other words if we don't put the shoreline in and, and the freezer and the refrigerator are still active i mean overnight so it sounds like that's a bad thing so just make it part of your operational yeah. procedure when you park it charge on to it. switch it to charge your own yeah. that way if somebody does come sure. and unplug so that, it that's part of our sop is every time we shoreline and we charge our own yeah, they discharge your own. It gets kicked out or popped out for some reason, or somebody forgets to do it, it just shut Then off. you don't discharge the back. Yes. You also have, on the back, you have four battery switches, the big red uh, toggles in the back, where you can turn those batteries off. So if you're going to park the truck, and you don't want to energize anything in the truck, and you don't have shore power, the best thing to do is make sure your comms breaker is turned off, and you can turn it off either here or you can turn it off right above the passenger uh, mm -hmm. that control panel right there boom right there or shut the batteries off in the back mm -hmm. if you know you're going to park it you don't have shore power and you don't care about anything being energized you can just shut the batteries off if you shut the batteries off and you plug in shore power you will not be charging the batteries they're, sh they're shut off so that's only sorry. if you know. Repeat that the traffic just. Yes, sir. You, up. you shut the. Yes, you sir. Shut the power and you shut the, the main batteries off. What was your comment after that? So uh, it was just kind of a, a comment that you could shut the batteries off if you know you're going to park the vehicle and you're not going to have. You don't want to energize anything and you don't have shore power and you want to preserve the batteries, just shut them off. Mm -hmm. However, if you shut them off and you plug in. The shore power, your battery charger will not run because the battery batteries are shut off. Okay. So they normally like to keep things frozen and things ice down in the refrigerator. Yeah. If you turn those that main switches off the back, it kills that so right? But it, it shuts off the battery discharge to everything, yes sir. Right. So then your your system batteries, it does not control the truck battery. You can still start the truck. That's a completely separate system. But if you shut those batteries off, it preserves the batteries from any parasitic draw, like somebody forgetting to cut off the comms console or the comms um, so breaker, the switch. That you're yeah, but that's that's something we got to talk about because normally you guys like to have things iced and cold, right? Well, if if yeah. that's the case, leave the shore power in, leave it on charger only. Okay. And that be fine. Because these uh, refrigerator and freezer are 12 volt and 110. They are. So. That's a good question. So when we're plugged in the shore power, do they automatically convert to 110 and not draw from the batteries? They're, when they're plugged into shore power, they only convert to 110 if you have your inverter output active. Otherwise, they're 12 volt. What should we do? They draw 12 volt. They draw, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So basically, everything yeah, you have in the driver's you, seat is gonna operate off those batteries. Yes, sir. Let me ask so For them. our purpose. Well, except uh, well, your your coffee makers, and then uh, all of these outlets back here are for sheltered chargers, as I understand it. You're going to put up there, so that's yeah. all 110 volt. Okay. So I had a thought. Oh yes. Um, 
So if you have it on charger only, you will not have inverter output, right? So if if you have that on charger only, I'm sorry, as long as you have short power, you will have inverter. But if you if so, we have batteries up there charging. It's on charger only, and we're hooked up to shore power. Everything is working. Everything is okay. working. Pop the shore power, jump in the truck, go down the road. We got to turn on the inverter. You do. Okay. You do. Okay. Yes, sir. So the you know, it's going to be a learning curve. Yeah, all, absolutely. I mean, this is all new. It's like when we get a new fire truck. It's all right. Don't touch your With your documentation. Yeah. <laughs> so, with your documentation, there's a laminated sheet that you can put wherever you want that as kind of a um, graphic walkthrough of what I've just discussed. I gave you obviously more the detail on that, but it shows you how to put it in charger only and how to put it in um, on and off position. That's cool. Go ahead. Yeah. This is a, I don't understand why people are okay. how that Here's thing is We'll they must walk around and yeah, say, yeah, I don't want this charger for that. Okay. Somebody, not you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. no, I mean, but it's like the, it's like, it's like the fire truck. As soon as you get out, you grab the cord and you, and, 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 and it's, it's muscle memory.